Not everyone can birth a shadow assassin to carry out their dirty work. Sometimes you gotta do it the old fashioned way and hire someone. In Karth, a wealthy location known as the Queen of Cities, in the eastern part of this world, there's one go-to stop the top dogs go to to have someone assassinated. The ancient guilds of sorrowful men. But your target better be in Karth, cause traveling outside the city gates really sucks. If you don't have a boat, you'll be stuck in the Red Waste. Daenerys is the only POV character to make the desert trek to the Queen of Cities, and she found a very theatrical place. People here just cry on the spot as a show to how civilized they are. The Sorrowful Assassins kinda do the same thing. Danny gets warned about them early on during her stay. After her dragons hatched, she tried to get the rulers of Karth to fund her conquest over Westeros. But the rulers called Pureborn have a reputation to be a little stingy. The men we bought, what did they say? Matho said nothing, Wendello praised the way I spoke, the exquisite refused me with the rest but he wept afterward. Alas, the Carthine should be so faithless. Zaro was not himself of the pureborn, but he had told her whom to bribe and how much to offer. Weep, weep for the treachery of men. Danny would sooner have wept for her gold. The bribe she tendered to Mathos, Wendello, and Egan Emeros the exquisite might have bought her a ship or hired a score of sellswords. Suppose I send Jora to demand the return of my gifts, she asked. Suppose a sorrowful man came to my palace one night and killed you as you slept, said Zaro. The sorrowful men were an ancient sacred guild of assassins, so named because they always whispered, I'm so sorry, to their victims before they killed them. The Carthian were nothing if not polite. It is wise he said that it is easier to milk the stone crow of Faros than wring gold from the pureborn. That's all the background info we get on the sorrowful men. Polite assassins, with their calling card being whispering, I'm so sorry. Funny as hell, but fits this weird ass theatrical culture here. But a key line is they're worthy of the pureborn's hiring, some of the richest, most powerful men in the world. This turned out to be a little intro setup for the sorrowful men. 20 chapters later, when Danny is preparing to leave Karth after becoming public enemy number one, the first and only sorrowful appear. When once everyone at Karth looked upon her and the three dragons with wonder, they were quickly reminded what Targaryen's dragons represented, fire and blood. The warlock's headquarters were burnt to the ground by Drogon after they tried to kidnap Danny. There weren't many good options for locations to escape to. Jorah Mormont suggested the Shadowlands. The Dothraki were happiest in their open fields. And Danny's hopes of taking back the Iron Throne were unrealistic at the time, lacking ships and an army. When contemplating what to do, Jorah spots two men following them. An old Westrosi looking man, the other a strong warrior from Essos. She was fleeing again. Her whole life had been one long flight it seemed. She had begun running in her mother's womb and never once stopped. How often had she and Viserys stolen away in the black of night, a bare step ahead of the usurper's hired knives. But it was run or die. Zaro had learned that Piet Pri was gathering the surviving warlocks together to work ill on her. Viserys had her believe they were only one step ahead of Robert Baratheon's assassins growing up. Those assassins were all in his paranoid head. Hired killers only started coming after Danny when she became pregnant with Khal Drogo's baby. That scared the hell out of Robert. But that one wine merchant sucked. The sorrowful men coming for Danny and Karth were the real deal. But Carthine stepped in her path. Mother of dragons, for you. He knelt and thrust a jewel box into her face. Danny took it almost by reflex. The box was carved wood. You are too generous. She opened it. Within was a glittering green scarab carved from onyx and emerald. Beautiful, she thought. This will help pay for our passage. As he reached inside the box, the man said, I am so sorry. But she hardly heard. The scarab unfolded with a hiss. Danny caught a glimpse of a malign black face, almost human, an arched tail dripping venom. And then the box flew from her hand in pieces, turning end over end. A very different assassin from what we see in Game of Thrones. I think that little kid there was supposed to be a mini warlock, I don't know. So manticores are these scorpion type creatures that are extremely lethal. One sting from their venomous tail is all it takes. It's not really clear if these things are a fantasy creature in the story. Danny saw a face that resembled a human, that's pretty wild. Game of Thrones, with author George Martin still on board advising, designed an insect with something that looked like a face on the tail. So probably the head of the manticore isn't the human face part. Its poison was used by Oberyn Martell against the mountain during that trial by combat. Oberyn is the poison guy you don't want to piss off. He spent a part of his life traveling studying the stuff. We're made to believe he used some sort of subtle magic to prolong its effects on the mountain, maximizing the pain before dying. Barristan Selmy, one of the best bodyguards to ever exist, smacks the box out of Danny's hand, saving her life. 
He was the old man George spotted following them. And good thing he was. Barrison also saved everyone that was on the port by instantly killing it with a stick. He hasn't lost his reflexes. And this is when he joins Danny's party. But the Sorrowful disappeared in the chaos of all the cowards running away from the already dead bug. Turned out it was Piet Pri that sent the Sorrowful Man after her to avenge the undying she'd burnt in their house of dust. Warlocks never forget a wrong, it was said. And the Sorrowful Men never fail to kill. It's gonna be hard for any of them to find her now, still being lost at the Dothraki Sea in the books. So count this as their first failed kill.